be together again. We've been together since Wednesday night, although you were seen over the screen. I didn't see your face, but you saw my face. Is it a good face? Tell me. Good face? We'll see more of one another in Jesus' name. I thought this was connecting from Leeds and Liverpool, Manchester, and Birmingham, Newcastle, and all the other places, uh, Glasgow. I may not remember your particular location, Aberdeen. Uh, we're together now. We're going to dig deep into the word of God. God is going to do something in your life. Yeah. And he'll bring, if you need rain, he'll give you rain. Yeah. If you need sunshine, he'll give you sunshine. Yeah. Great things are going to happen in your life in Jesus' name. Do you think you are ready? And you really want to collect a great thing from the Lord? We're going to have a great time together. Let's close our eyes to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, how wonderful to be together today. What a beautiful day. I will thank you, Lord, for all our leaders, all our pastors, all our overseers. We thank you for all our workers and all these members of the choir. Everyone, Lord, serving you in one capacity or the other. We pray, Lord, as they shuffle some of their service, consecration to you, you shuffle back blessings unto them in Jesus' name. And all our people who are here, newcomers, invitees, everyone, we pray that this will be a great and wonderful day in Jesus' name. Feel our cups to overflowing. And let the blessing pass through us to members of our family. And to everyone around us in Jesus name. Thank you Lord because we know you have answered. In Jesus name we pray. And the people of God said. You know they told me that you know. I just learned that uh, deeper life uh, here. We are charismatic, Pentecostal, evangelical. Biblical everything, and if you put all that together, your amen should be fourfold. Now, give me a good amen. You are there already. You can sit down. God bless you. This morning, I'm going to uh, we're going to search the word of God together because it's very necessary. Because I discover a question in the Bible that God Himself asked. And as I search through, looking for where I can find a similar question, I find that that question is another part of the Bible too. And then I find the answer all over the Bible. And we'll not be able to do justice to the question we're asking if we do not go through what the Word of God is revealing concerning this great question. Turn with me your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. And I'm reading there from verse 26 and verse 27. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything to hatch for me? Here is the almighty God that challenged Jeremiah, a great prophet in the Old Testament. And he said, Jeremiah, hear this. I am. It's, he is the always I am. The ever living I am. And the one that was and is and will forever be. On the first day of the creation, he said, I am. And at the time he appealed, he appeared to Moses, he was the I am. And then when he comes to Jeremiah now, he's still the great I am. And then you come to Revelation, he's still the great almighty I am. And he says, I am the Lord God almighty. Now tell me, Jeremiah, is there anything too hard for me? There must have been something in the land of Israel. A concern in the minds of the people of God. And Daniel used a word. I didn't want to use the word, but I'll just throw it at you. Daniel said, my cogitations troubled me. If you've never heard that before, it means the thoughts I had. 
the concerns I had, I thought about everything. I looked at my surrounding. I looked at the nation of Israel at the time I'm living. And I look at all the other nations and I then began to wonder. And he said, my thoughts, my bewilderment, my astonishment, my cogitations troubled me. And it's because the children of Israel, they were troubled at this time. And he looked at everything around them. That's why God said, Jeremiah, why are you so bothered and bewildered? Why are you so worried and anxious? Why is it you are thinking as if you've come to the end of the road? Jeremiah now tell me, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? What other time did God himself say that to challenge a patriarch, a prophet, to challenge the people and to say, what are you thinking about? What problems do you have on your hands that makes you so worried and anxious as if the world has come almost to an end? Is there anything you had for me? Genesis chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 14. In Genesis chapter 18, we're looking at verse 14. Is anything to hard for the Lord? Here is a question again. And what had happened here is Sarah now was old. And Abraham was old. And biologically, scientifically, they were not expecting a child anymore. And yet the Lord called Abraham and he said, come out. Sometimes when you lock yourself in, you don't see too much. I want you to come out here. And then he came out, look up. Then he looked up because many times you're looking down, you're looking back, you're looking to the left or to the right. There are times you stop looking back, looking around, looking down, look up and look at the stars and begin to count. Lord, you're giving me an insurmountable problem. How can I count the stars? All right, that's what I wanted to get from you. Or your children will be as these uncountable stars, Lord. Tell me that again and see I'm an old man and my wife is an old man. How shall that be? That's what brought this question. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? That's the challenge the Lord is bringing to you today. As you look at your family background. As you look at your circumstances. As you look at the things that you're trying to chase and get. And it's like the mirage of life. Just before you get to it, it's gone. And there you are saying, is that ever possible? Let me bring you back to your dreams when you are much, much younger. And you are like Joseph I spoke about the other day. And the Lord gave you a big dream before you came to this country. And you had this kind of ambition and desire, destiny, that this is where I'm going to get you. But now, the way the clouds are and the way the circumstances are, you are thinking, is that ever possible? Why don't you sit beside Joseph and let's sit beside him now in the dungeon. Now, Joseph, what do you think? All those dreams you had, all the ambition you had, what do you think about it now? Is that still possible? Really, frankly, I cannot tell. I didn't know I'll find myself in a dungeon like this, in a valley like this. This is not what I dreamt about. That's why the question is coming to you and coming to me. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? By the time we finish today, you'll find there's nothing too hard for the Lord. He can take on any challenge in your life. Any difficulty in your life, he'll get through it today. And all those things that bothered you, that you were worried about, that you were anxious about, today is the day of solution to every problem. Is anything too hard for the Lord? That's the message today. I'm going to deal with the message. You know, I always have my three points. One, two, three. If, uh, if it's not up to three, I'll make it up. I'll just have to add it until it becomes three. And if I came and gave you two points to say the pastor did not prepare today, and I want to tell you I really prepared. I knew you were coming. And I had to throw all this at you, but you must be ready to swallow it. Are you ready? You'll get it. Number one, the question among God's people. The question among God's people. In the hearts of God's people, there had been a question, a concern. And they have been thinking about all this, the worry, the anxiety that makes them to feel, look at what God is promising. Look at what God says he's going to do. Look at the place God says he's taking us to. 
Do you see yourself? I can't see myself there. Do you see yourself ever achieving this and having this and possessing this? No, I can't see myself there. That's the reason why, as they were wondering in their hearts, the questions they were asking, the concern that they had, that's why God brought the question to the number two now, our comprehension of God's promises. Our comprehension of God's promises. Number three, our confidence in his glorious power. Our confidence in his glorious power. We have opened our Bible to Genesis chapter 18. Let's stay there and read now from verse 12. Genesis chapter 18, reading from verse 12. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, At I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Saying, shall I have, shall I of a shorty bear a child, which I'm old? Then you have verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? It was the question in verse 13 that produced or generated the question in verse 14. In the might of Sarah, in the might of Abraham, we're too old to have a miracle now. We're too old to have laughter, joy, icy coming into our lives. That's why God said, why are you thinking like that? Why are you limiting God? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And let's look at Second Kings chapter 7 verse 2. The question among God's people that generated the question from the Almighty God himself. Why he said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? In Second Kings chapter 7 verse 2. Then a lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God, and said, Behold, if the lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? There had been a terrible famine, and there had been in a terrible need in the nation. And it appeared there was no cloud in the sky. And there was no rain coming. And no crops anywhere. And people were dying of hunger. In fact, it got to the point that people, even tender women, were not so tender anymore. They were boiling, killing and boiling their children for food. Can you think about that? All of a sudden, the prophet of God appeared and said, By this time tomorrow, 24 hours, things are going to change. That's why this, this man said, ah, why are you raising our hope and you are going to dash our hopes against the rock? How is that possible? Even if the Lord will open the windows in heaven, well, that, how can that be? That's why the Lord is asking you. When you think you're already at your limit, impossible. How can this happen? How can this happen? You know, the other day, I'm talking about you now, you had a dream, and you know, it looked funny to you. Then you woke up in the morning, then you called the person near you, you said, look at the kind of dream I had at this age, at this age. Look at the kind of dream I had. If this dream had come 15 years ago of course i would have accepted it but look at this one isn't this funny no I, I, i'm not going to say it's funny isn't this wonderful that at this time the lord will come to you now and say look at this this is coming and it's coming i said it's coming and that, that's what the man said even if the Lord will open the windows of how can that be because he was limiting the power of the almighty God that's why God then replied with a question why are you thinking like that I see if it will not be is anything too hard for me what's the answer no, nothing is too hard for the Lord. We're looking at Luke chapter 1. The question that brought God's question. In Luke chapter 1 verse 18. Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. You see, they're always going back to the natural. They're always going back to the tangible. They're always going back to what you can see and touch and taste. They're always going back to what we call sense knowledge. 
sense knowledge what you feel what you see what you hear what you touch and Zechariah said angel i hear you but why didn't you come earlier it's too late I'm an old man now. And Elizabeth, my wife, is too old to have the experience you are talking about. And he said, how can this be? Whereby shall I know this? That's why the question is coming from God. Why do you talk like that? Why do you think like that? Why do you limit yourself and limit your faith and limit the Almighty God? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Give me the answer again. No. Look at verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? You make me to wonder. And you make me even to become bewildered. And you want me to, to be anxious. How can that be? Because she said, Seeing I know not a man. You see, when you come to an impossible situation that everybody will tell you, don't raise your hope so high you're deceiving yourself. Science says you are wrong. And all the history of the world says you are wrong. The experience of man, since man was born into this world, the experience of man says you are wrong. Don't hope like that. You'll, you're, kind of, you're going to de destroy yourself. And that's why you, all these people were just like you and me, men and women of like passions as we are. And they began to ask the Lord the question. When the Lord showed them, he was going to do something extraordinary. Something unimaginable, something incredible, something impossible for man. They always ask the question, how shall this be seen that this doesn't follow after scientific knowledge? And they were told in that same chapter 1 verse 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. For with God, tell me out loud, nothing shall be impossible. Let's come back to Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah, you see Jeremiah had, had a big, a big problem on his hands. And because of that big problem, he had been thinking a particular way. In fact, Jeremiah got to the position where he said, I don't think I want to preach again. No point preaching. I don't think I want to declare the word of God to anybody again because I cannot see any hope. There's no use declaring the word of God to the people because no change is ever going to happen. And then he almost saw the Babylonians, that's Nebuchadnezzar, coming with his army. And he said, these people, Israel is gone. Forget about Israel. Lord, send me to another place. Send me to another ministry. And send me to another people that still have hope. As for the children of Israel, they are hopeless. And then God said, are you in the council of God? Did you have a private conference the other week with the Almighty God? Were you in a private committee with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the angels? Why do you talk like that? Is there anything too hard for me? You know, sometimes you want to quit your family. Because everything, you say, Pastor, this family, since I came into this family, 